Rendering soft goods, one of the trickier things to render besides vehicles as an industrial designer when you're doing your product design. You've seen this snippet in my intro for quite some time. Let's take a look at how I render it. My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. I hope that you like, enjoy, and become a subscriber. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and then you hit the bell. Hit the bell again so you get the little parentheses around it. That way you'll be notified every time I have a new video. Don't forget to check out the design and making merch just below the video. All kinds of stuff, t-shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous fun things you might like. I start off the rendering with a line drawing from an underlay that I've already created. This makes everything nice and clean and we're just kind of filling in and coloring in the lines sort of coloring book style so to speak um, but it's all the hard work that you've done before this that makes everything good so make sure that you have a good underlay and that your object looks believable in perspective or whatever it is that you're doing so we're going to fill in all the color first and then we'll come back and we will add volume and depth and form to the object. So I'm just laying down the basic color palette, which is this orange and a gray and white for these gloves. Now here's a little tip. I'm using a 32 pound laser paper for this rendering and I use it for most of my rendering. So this is a pretty heavy uh, white paper. It's not your regular average copy paper. It's a little thicker. I think that uh, it allows for less bleed with the markers and it gives you superior results. It's also a substantial piece of paper. So if you hand that to somebody, it's not just some flimsy little thing. It takes marker really well. It takes gel pens really well. It takes ink really well. And it's something that uh, I'm a pretty firm believer in using good paper. It's also on 100% whiteness, meaning white is white. You'd be pretty surprised if you compare it to regular copy paper. That copy paper is not really white. The basics are pretty well blocked in at this point. The palms with the darker leather for the gripping area. And now we're going to start adding a little bit of form to the gloves. And I start out very light, building up my values as I always do. And the gloves are basically three-dimensional objects. They have a side, a top, and a back. And we are going to try to show a little bit of that volume. And on a white material, it doesn't take very much. So I'm only using a 10 and 20% gray here on the white to show the form. But what's important is that you model in the folds of the material, right? This is not an injection molded hard plastic part. It's a very soft, organic, flowing object. And you need to show that and represent that to show the materials, the creases, the little imperfections, all those things add to the realism of the item that you're rendering. For example, there's a sew line right here, and I make that a little bit darker because in real life, when you have a sew line like that, the material tends to valley down and then you create a little shadow in there and you need to show that people know what that looks like and it just helps add realism. The back side of the thumb here is in shadow, and so we make that a little bit darker. And the underside of the fingers here, those are curved a little bit, and so we wanna make those a little bit darker to show the form of the fingers and to show the form of the gloves themselves. And you can see it's really starting to take shape here. And all the little creases and folds, you wanna emphasize those, it makes the product real. 
I'm going to come back and add a little bit of value to the orange panels using a little bit of a mineral orange. Originally you saw I went in there with the gray. That's not really the right color to use. You want to use a warm tone to do that. So now let's add a little bit of texture. And I'm going to apologize in advance because I don't actually have that recorded. Somehow that didn't get recorded back in the day when this was made. But I'm using a sanding screen and I'm going to show you that technique and how that works. We're basically doing a rubbing on a piece of paper. The sanding screen is fantastic. It's often used to simulate material, sometimes like a carbon fiber in a vehicle or whatever. But it works fantastic for soft goods. And I orientate the sanding screen at an angle to sort of mix things up and it gives things a little bit more depth, particularly with a pair of gloves. And here I'll show you uh, the sanding screen is turned at uh, 90 degrees to us. And so it's pretty, pretty boring. But on a object like a pair of gloves, you want to rotate it uh, maybe to a 45 and this thing makes that makes things a little bit more realistic now in some of the parts of the glove we have like a raw leather uh, that I'd like to use and I'm using a piece of old sandpaper from a floor sander so this is super coarse stuff 20 grit and basically it gives me these nice little high points and it sort of makes the material look like a raw leather it gives me that nice raw look you can, of course, also use this sanding screen with uh, white. So maybe there was like uh, the material has a white texture to it or some white um, thread sewn into it. And the glove has some of that as well. Again here, I'm or changing the orientation and you will see here it's dramatically a different effect even though it's the same underlay. So again, apology for not having the original footage. Not sure what happened to that, but uh, technology has changed. My cameras have changed, and that do doesn't happen anymore. So in the palm area right here, I've actually got a black texture in there already that I did with a piece of sandpaper. And I think that I want to put in some, some white to add a little contrast, and I immediately hate it. So I uh, er erase it out. And uh, now I'm coming in with a white uh, gel pen. This is a jelly roll. And I'm adding a little white uh, stitching to all the dark uh, material here in the palm. Just to add a little bit of contrast. And I'm bumping up the uh, stitching on some of the other parts of the glove. I'm using just a regular ballpoint pen here. Gel pen would work um, just as well. Now you'll notice it's the details that really make this glove sing. The stitching, the modeling of the material and the form. It's the attention to those things that really make this thing realistic. It's also what shows that you as a designer understand the product that you're designing. I add in some notes and I am sort of penciling in some sort of title. Ultimately, I take this out digitally later in the sketch, but if you're just starting out, I suggest that you lay out your title and put in some effort to make it look halfway decent. Here's a little final detail that I decide to add in around the little tug strings, little tightening strings on these gloves. And here's the scan. So this scan is scanned in probably 300 dpi, levels are adjusted, white is white, and I clean up more or less any imperfections, uh, smudges, that sort of thing. I immediately, of course, remove that uh, terrible hand-drawn title at the top and create something digitally, we call them Shredder Z, and these are winter gloves, of course. Add a little logo at the bottom, and you're pretty much done. Should be able to drop that into your digital presentation just like that. Show the stuff to your client, and then ultimately make your tech pack and go to production. 
Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can do that by clicking on the icon in the bottom right of the video or below the video. Give it a thumbs up and follow the channel there as well. You want to know about upcoming design content and projects that I'm working on? Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and my favorite Google Plus links below. Rock on. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.